Uh, welcome back guys. This is going to be the 10th part of our video tutorial series that we've been uh, doing on AngularJS, Node.js and Express.js and basically persisting our data into MySQL database. If you had, um, last time if you guys follow me, um, we wrote this little service. This is AngularJS service method here um, called create product. Of course, this is going to be a post, and where we're posting would be this endpoint right here. Up this endpoint, of course, doesn't really exist. We'll be creating that endpoint, and I'll show you how to do that next. And these are all the data that was handed over by, by our controller to the service. Now, the service will be, post, will be posting all this data into our endpoint. Okay, So let's go ahead and define that. Let's write our endpoint first. And uh, this is where uh, we write our endpoints. We have to add our uh, route into the route table here. So we already have the get request for get product. Mm, let's go ahead and write. Um, I'm going to add a new route table here. Into the route table. Route table is just an array. I'm going to push new routes. A route will consist of a bunch of objects and we'll be uh, defining our routes here. The first property of that object will be a uh, request type. In this case, as you guess, the request type is going to be a post request. And then the request URL, let me um, just request URL would be this this is our endpoint that we're going to define okay and then it will have a callback function just for um so I'm going to copy this one just for now as you know it takes three parameter it's a request type and the request URL where we'll be posting our data and the callback function. Uh, in this case, we are not rendering the view. That's why I'm not going to say a render. I don't need that method here. But um, so um, now we have our post defined. Let's see when the we post it. Let's see how we how how, how our data looks like. Request. Uh, body. Let's just print out that one into the console and see all our data coming in. Okay. Just by doing this, I think um, at least I should be able to post it and see this data into the console. Okay. Let's go ahead and run this application. Okay. Um, Here is a create product. Um, computer programming books let's say this is the product we are selling from our website or something um, some price here this feature us uh, to to allow the upload the uh, upload the you know the picture associated with in this case this particular product is work in progress it's not working yet so I'm not gonna choose any file from here to upload but if I do if I click this one add product right now you can see as you can see right here it, um, it it's posting some data this is a product category ID this is the corresponding category that we selected from the drop-down list and the name of the product that we choose and description and the price and of course as I said this pro this property pro uh, product image is null it's not being used right now okay okay so far it looks good um, now, when when I when I do a print to our um, request a body from this callback function, that information is there. Now those those information is there. So now what we can do is we um, basically now we can write our DAO here. Just for now, I'm gonna um, comment that. Okay. Now we have to write our uh, DAO object, okay? Just like we wrote for the product category, um, 
DAO, we're going to write, um, here is a product category DAO, we're going to write a new uh, data access object and we're going to name it as a product DAO, which kind of makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new JavaScript file here called product DAO. This DAO will have a method um, that we can use to you know submit the data actually to this MySQL database and it, as its structure is going to be similar to the um, product category DAO so I'm going to grab most of the thing that I need so I, I, I just grabbed this you know source code from the my product category DAO um, I first just I really care about this particular method for now so I'm going to go ahead and I don't need any of this method. I will need it as we start writing the new feature. Okay. So instead of product cat, this is going to be a product DAO because it is responsible for persisting our product information. And then when this callback methods get called, we're going to pass the product information, not the product category and this is the callback function that user will be you know uh, passed to the method this method would get passed and the insert statement is of course we're not inserting into category we're inserting into the product and this is the syntax that we'll be using set with the question mark here okay and we're going to define here uh, basically the way I'm this you can do several ways but this is the how I've been doing basically following this pattern so I'll follow this I'm going to say a product this is the, uh, this, since I already defined product into the function parameter, so I'm going to say uh, product to be added. Product to be added, okay? And if this will have, uh, this is, you know, JavaScript object literal here. Uh, because I remember we are trying to persist the data into the table called um, product. And we probably want to delete everything. If there anything from here, I'm gonna say uh, describe product. Okay, so I need the product category FK. That's a, that's the primary key of the category. Okay, so okay, so how do we obtain that product category FK? Is basically from here, the product contain that information if you which you can see from here in from our service here okay the service from the angular by the way okay so now the de of course you know it doesn't have any property cool detail the next property we need is a product product cost product cost and how do I obtain the product cost of course it's going to come out from the object product object and it has a property called product cost. Just gonna grab this one. And the next pro next field that we need to persist is name. Um, so name I assume is gonna come out from product dot name property. And the next thing I need from sir is a description. So it's going to come out also from the product dot um, description. Okay. Then after that, um, next thing I need after description, create a date. So, but created date I type a little differently. It's in, it's a created DT created DT. Uh, it, uh, just a new instance of date object, you know, so it's a new date. And next param next field I need is is active instead of is valid. It will be is active and set it to true. By default, the record would be persisted as a valid record. And the next required parameter that I need is a product price. So product price, I think that should come out. From the UI, so it's product. Let me make sure I don't have any typo. Um, I 
okay here is my product price okay now I have this object ready to be persisted into my, my SQL database so uh, just to see that we have all our data and we don't have any undefined value coming in we can we can do console.log remember this code is running on the node.js in the server side and all the angular side is running into the browser side client side okay it's a little confusing just to make sure let me uh okay that is that and, and you know if you if you have been following along it's very uh, very easy for you now to follow we um, just like in the product category we need to have this connection provider that's the guy knows how to get a uh, SQL I mean my SQL connection information and then once I have that connection information assuming I have the connection and I in the connection has a method called query I call that query and pass the insert statement into the query and the second parameter is the data which is this guy right here of course this is not a category anymore of course this no I so this is going to be a product to be added and the last parameter is always the callback function with the error cost parameter and the result set to be returned if, the, if it becomes successful okay so one more thing I would like to do right here as I have an if there is an error I would like to handle it I, it's, it's going to be very helpful you know I've been writing code and it's um, sometimes you your application doesn't work and you don't you like why it doesn't work I mean like you know so for the debugging purposes you you want to do something like at least you can if there is error you want to at least you know you of course in real life if, if this application has to go into production then you have some sort of uh, middleware like a logger system that will log this information hey because of this reason there's a failure occurred. Maybe these fields are not valid to the database, or there is no data, undefined property, or invalid data, or whatever, right? We would like to capture that information. Just for now, though, I just want to log that. I want to see if it comes in. If it comes in here, I want to know why it is failing. So I just dump that error into the console, okay? Okay, if if I done come in here means this when this method get method gets executed I you know things looking good so I have this um, then I say I basically when this method was called in a client provided a callback function us to invoke this is where we're invoking that function with some parameter hey status we have successfully executed your command and I want to see the result and once all is done I basically uh, line number 41 <laughs> These are all infrastructure code, you know, I started from the beginning, that's why if you need to uh, review this code, you have to go into the very um, earlier board, uh, earlier um, part of my video tutorial. Okay, if everything, is, well, there's one more thing, because this is a product DAO, and this is, a, you know, um, Node.js code, so you want to export, not the category this time, I'm going to name it as a product DAO, and then assigned a product DAO JavaScript literal object here so this is our object this is what we are exporting to the module so that other module the consuming module will be able to use it okay I think if everything is good now we should be able to wire it up from our um, from our um, config or we could have named it like it's it's kind of like a controller, but I named it like a config. But some people say controller. So, okay, now I'm gonna go into here. Very first thing I have to do is I have to acquire that, right? Um, just look at that syntax since I I already have. So I'm gonna look it into. Um, yeah, let's say one of these. Of course, this is not the product category. It's going to be a product object, product DAO, and so it is in server folder and DAO folder subfolder, and it has a um, file name called product DAO here. You see the product category DAO. So we are acquiring that file. Okay. If the acquirement becomes successful, then we can say. Um, product DAO 
is a product DAO, it, there is a method create product category. So um, we can what we can pass as a product now is a uh, the request has a body property. That is what we're going to pass as the first parameter. And, and of course, the second parameter it expect is a callback function. Um, Just let me look at into the how do I pass the callback function? Okay, so I don't have to uh, I don't have to worry about syntax error here. Okay. Okay, it's a uh, status right here. That's object. Okay, in the product DAO object, we have a method to create product category, and we are we are passing the body. So body basically contains all the properties that we set in from our Angular JS service, which is um, all these values comes in here, and then we pass the callback function to our uh, DAO object, and we want to as the data comes out, we're going to return the status as a JSON data. and just make it a little better I don't like to have a bunch of blank spaces into my code it's just my thing okay anyway so if everything is good we should have working post um, let me delete everything from table called product okay Oh, delete from product. Um, I don't know why I put the asterisk. As if I won't do. It. Okay, there is nothing. Just to make sure, you know, uh, the no data is there. Let's see if I can. Um, I can build this application now. I, guess I can post this one. Uh, even before that, in my last video tutorial, I I forgot to uh, show you one more piece of code. That is very very important. Uh, so that's why I'm going into my product create controller. This is a controller, the Angular JS controller. In here, um, this okay. I'll I'll show you first. Let me show you the UI and then I will explain the code that I want to show you. Okay. Let's say some some programming books. And I'm going to choose the category as, uh, do I have any book category? Okay, I'm just going to say uh, software. Uh, cost, $45. Awesome programming books. <laughs> Excuse me, guys, I'm not that feeling great. Um, This one right here, I'm not going to, um, I'm, I'm, right now this is not really working, so I'm not going to choose any file to upload. And I see this add product. Ah, oh, <laughs> this message, you know, a looks like. Okay, here is a couple of things that's going on. I would like to. I I, do, I wrote some additional feature from the controller that I would also like to show you. Even before that, even like um, this this is um, drop down list right here. Um, I only show you the markup side, the front, just the HTML portion of the code, but this is how it really starts in the controller. So to bind the drop down list, what I had to do is, of course, I have this method here, private method inside the controller called get product categories. And this guy gets all the product categories, and then, you know, basically it's, I, it's set into the scope variable product categories. That's what I have. And then this is, what, this is where I declare the method and call the method. That part I haven't shown you before, that's why I want to do a uh, serial. And other thing I, I did, I would like to um, like to explain to you guys one more thing. Um, it's about UI. You you might have noticed in the UI, um, let's say, um, let me go ahead and enter one more, one more, okay, some books. One more entry into my... Um, 
Oh, this is wrong category for books. New computer science books. Okay, fifty-six dollar. That's that's our um you know um total price that cost, and we're selling at ninety-eight dollars. So let's say some of the awesome books to be sold. Blah 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 blah. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add new book. This book right here. So um. It says for now, it, it says a record added successfully. After 500 milliseconds, see all this information is automatically um, is automatically gone from here, which is very nice, you know. So it, you, we provide a feedback to the user, hey, your, your, your accent becomes successful. And after that, we clear out so all, all, all the data that he entered from the system. And that code, you can do, of course, so many ways, but I would like to show you the very effective way. So that method could be used in anywhere, and that's my next goal. I will be, you know, converting that into a service by itself. Okay, so that's the, the method I would like to show you. So if you look it into here, of course, we create the product, but we pass the product to the service on success. And everything is good. We have this AngularJS timeout function, you know, the callback function right here. And we clear. There is a. We, I wrote a little method called clear, clear product. This this feature, this clear product, is responsible for clearing it out. Lists all the fields, clearing out the value that user had entered previously. Okay, that is. It could be done very easily using, if you. Um, come from, you know, like C, a job, a background, there is something called reflection. Basically, with the reflection, it will be, uh, we'll be using the, we'll be checking the type and based on the type and we'll changing the value, right? In, in, a, in, in JavaScript, we can use something like this. Instead of, instead of going through each property of the object manually, we're going to say something like, remember, the, all our data from the UI is containing this scope.product object. So we are here. We have a for loop. We are basically iterating. We are going through each object that this property contains. On each iteration, this code is this piece of code is very important because, like in JavaScript, like if you basically when you define an object, it goes to the prototype hierarchy, and then so this one is saying if this property that we are looking at is the property that yours, not inherited, not inherited property. Meaning it's not coming out from your parent or, or maybe a grandparent or whatever. If the property that strictly belongs to you, then we can say, okay, once uh, once that product property is known, then we can say, all right, so based on the type, if the type of the pro property is a string, then all we're doing right here is saying, okay, here's a product, here's a property of that product. We are setting that to back to empty string. By doing that, our UI basically changes all the value entered by user previously goes away. We don't have to write a um, bunch of, if we didn't have code like this and we have to do, um, to clear that out, we would have to write something like scope dot product dot maybe name. You have to go, you have to write code like this for all the property that you, that you wanted to clear out from your UI. Just by having this little piece of code, we can just, you know, take care of that. Uh, later on, um, what I'm thinking of create itself as a little um, service. So we can, we don't have to write this, we don't have to carry this clear product everywhere. So we just call our service and service would give this method to us. Well, of course, we'll be passing our object to the service. Okay. That is all I wanted to share today. So now, of course, you know, uh, looks like our UI for um, our um, create product feature is complete. In the next video tutorial, what I would like to do is we'll be do edit. And we basically follow the same pattern that we did for create product category. Anyway, guys, it has been really a pleasure learning, sharing the code. And, you know, you know, guys are giving me so good suggestions and keeping keeping giving me suggestions, guys. Thank you so much for watching videos. Have a good day.